Cybersecurity, where your digital fortress is protected by duct tape and a sticky note. You've got dozens of devices chatting across the internet like it's a casual water cooler, but somehow hackers turn that chit chat into a jackpot or a dumpster fire, usually both. In a world where everyone's connected, your data dances across networks with barely a watchful eye, and the bad guys are always waiting for that one unlocked door or that careless click. Welcome to the wild, unpredictable, and often hilarious world of cybersecurity, a realm where the threats are real, the defenses are patched together, and the chaos is just part of the daily grind. Attack vectors or management buzzwords. Cybersecurity isn't just about installing firewalls or updating antivirus software. It's a daily juggling act in a circus where the lions are hackers and the clowns are, well, usually management. Every day brings a new headline, a new exploit, and a new email from someone upstairs asking, hey, are we protected from this? As if cybersecurity is a magical on-off switch. Now, when someone drops the term attack vectors in a meeting, you can almost hear the collective nodding from people who clearly have no idea what it means. To them, it's just another fancy buzzword like synergy or cloud optimization. In reality, it's the hacker's route into your system, the digital equivalent of a burglar picking your lock, climbing through your window, or tricking your dog with a fake treat. But explaining that? Oh, that's the real challenge. Management loves the word vector because it sounds smart, even if they think it's something you measure in geometry, not the thing that just stole your customer database. Firewalls or just digital garden fences. Once upon a time, firewalls were the pride of every network, a digital fortress with iron gates, drawbridges, and imaginary dragons keeping out intruders. Fast forward to today, and that mighty fortress has turned into a wobbly garden fence that your neighbor's cat or a hacker can leap over with zero effort. The sad truth is most secured networks are being guarded by rule sets written in 2015 and never touched again because, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Inside, the firewall configuration looks like someone dumped spaghetti on a keyboard and hit save. Random ports left open for temporary testing. Ghost accounts still whitelisted for ex-employees and ACL so permissive, they might as well say, come on in. Free Wi-Fi for everyone. VLANs, great in theory, abandoned in practice. And let's not forget the mythical next-gen firewalls, proudly advertised but rarely updated. In the end, your network's last line of defense often acts less like a wall and more like a confused bouncer who lets anyone in, as long as they knock politely. Passwords, complex or confusing? Passwords are the eternal love-hate story of cybersecurity. They're supposed to be the iron locks on our digital doors, but somehow, Everyone's still using QWERTY like it's a state secret. The irony? People know better, but convenience always wins the battle. You say, use a strong password, and they hear, add an exclamation mark and call it a day. Then come the password policy. Those sacred scrolls of frustration must contain 12 characters, one uppercase, one lowercase, a number, a symbol, your childhood trauma, and maybe a drop of dragon blood. Users comply, barely, and then instantly forget it. Cue the sticky notes under keyboards, screenshots on phones, or that legendary email titled, My Passwords, Don't Delete. Password managers promise salvation until someone forgot the master password and the vault became an encrypted tomb. Meanwhile, admins enforce resets every 90 days, thinking it helps, when in reality, users just rotate through password one, password two, and so on. In short, passwords aren't protecting us, they're trolling us, one reset link at a time. Multi-factor authentication, annoying but necessary. Multi-factor authentication, MFA, is the cybersecurity equivalent of locking your door, then chaining it, bolting it, and asking for a secret handshake before entry. It's the hero everyone loves to hate. Users roll their eyes the moment they hear, enter the code sent to your phone, like it's an unreasonable demand, instead of the thing standing between them and a ransomware nightmare. Management, of course, wants maximum security with minimum clicks. They dream of Fort Knox protection, but want it to feel like logging into Netflix. Meanwhile, the IT team is stuck in the middle, explaining again why one password for everything is basically an engraved invitation to hackers. Then come the real-world hurdle. Phones left at home, batteries dead time-based codes expiring mid-login, and when the MFA app decides to freeze, cue the help desk tickets and user rage. Still, for all its annoyances, MFA remains the unsung superhero of cybersecurity, 
stopping attacks that would otherwise waltz right through. Sure, it's a hassle, but compared to cleaning up a breach, it's the best kind of inconvenience. Patch or perish eventually. Patching is the cybersecurity equivalent of eating vegetables. Everyone agrees it's essential, yet somehow it's always tomorrow's problem. Teams know those updates close dangerous holes, but the moment you mention downtime, someone in management faints dramatically and mutters, let's schedule it next quarter. Meanwhile, the servers are running vulnerabilities so old they should qualify for a pension. Enter the legendary change free. It's the corporate force field against responsibility. Invoked during holidays, financial closings, or whenever someone simply doesn't feel like testing patches. While the free stands firm, hackers are already hosting a virtual block party inside your network. Even automated patch systems don't save the day. Half the time they break something or stall halfway through. And let's be honest, applying a patch always comes with that anxiety. Will this crash production? So teams procrastinate until disaster strike. By then, the patch notes read like obituary. Fixed, the exact exploit that ruined your weekend. In the cybersecurity world, patching isn't optional. It's survival, disguised as routine maintenance. Endpoint protection, almost perfect, except when it's not. Endpoint protection tools like CrowdStripe, Sentinel One, or Defender are marketed like digital superheroes, ready to detect, defend, and destroy threats before lunch. But in reality, half the battle is just making sure everyone actually uses them. Sharon's BYOD phone is too new. Bob's laptop is too old. And someone in accounting turned theirs off because it slowed down Excel. Congratulations, your security perimeter now looks like Swiss cheese. Even when the software works, human behavior doesn't. Updates get postponed, alerts get ignored, and IT's please reboot your system emails vanish into the void. Meanwhile, hackers are quietly taking field trips through your network. And when EDR gets too aggressive, blocking harmless macros or eating CPU like candy, Users revolt, demanding freedom. IT, under pressure, dials it back. The end result? Great tools, half implemented. Endpoint protection only shines when it's consistent, updated, and respected. Otherwise, it's just a superhero left on mute. Alerts gone wild. Security alerts are supposed to be the vigilant watchdogs of your network. But often, they act more like a hyperactive office parrot, squawking at every minor twit. Sims and IDS IPS tools, like Splunk or Snort, crank out alerts by the thousands, burying teams in a digital avalanche. The problem? Most are false positive. The system cries wolf so often that when a real threat shows up, it strolls in unnoticed. Normal activity becomes a trigger frenzy. Logging in from Starbucks? Alert. Clicking a link? Alert! Admin logging in at 3 a.m.? Definitely. Alert. Fine-tuning these floodgates would help, but security teams are stretched thin, drowning in notifications and hoping nothing critical slips by. Meanwhile, clever attackers slip through, blending with normal traffic patterns, exploiting the chaos. Persistent, noisy, sometimes maddening, alerts are essential even if they're a little too enthusiastic. Quantum computing and cryptography, waiting for the future. Quantum computing is the glittering promise of tomorrow's cybersecurity. A mythical unicorn capable of shattering encryption and redefining data protection. Terms like post-quantum cryptography and quantum-resistant algorithms sound like science fiction, dazzling in presentations, yet in reality, most of it still lives in labs and academic papers. Meanwhile, RSA 2048 and other traditional encryption methods feel increasingly like rickety bridges over a canyon. Safe for now. Management, naturally, treats it like background noise. Let's wait for the Gartner Report. Translation, quantum threats are tomorrow's problem, not today. Practical, deployable, quantum-proof solutions are still years away leaving security teams clinging to patches, monitoring, and hope. It's preparing for a cosmic storm while the mundane chaos of today, malware, phishing, ransomware, keeps the lights on. Quantum is coming. Complacency isn't an option. The never-ending cybersecurity comedy. Cyberspace isn't a fairy tale. 
It's a non-stop drama comedy of patching marathons, alert avalanches, and budget battles that make primetime soap operas look peaceful. Cybersecurity isn't just work, it's a lifestyle of juggling flaming swords while tiptoeing over a pit of ransomware. Every day, teams wrestle with licensing costs that make finance groan louder than a dying server fan. Convincing management to approve a new tool, like teaching a cat to swim, impossible and chaotic. Meanwhile, Carl still has admin access, hasn't updated his password since 2005, and clicks suspicious links with pride. Forget the fancy policies, a rogue USB stick, an ignored alert, and suddenly the hackers are hosting a digital house party. Through it all, cybersecurity pros patch, monitor, and argue about licenses. Heroes in a world where chaos is the only constant. And yet, Carl still has access. After every firewall, patch, training session, and high-tech security gadget, one stubborn truth remains. Carl still has access. The infamous ex-employee who somehow kept credentials, handed out passwords like party fouls, and treats cybersecurity like an optional suggestion. You can deploy next-gen EDR, enforce MFA, and patch every vulnerability, but if Carl's account isn't deactivated, it's like leaving the master key under the doormat of Fort Knox. Hackers know it, circling Carl's account like sharks. Forgotten permissions, sticky note passwords, and ignored audits keep the legend alive. Technology and policies bow to one irrefutable fact, the human wildcard. His name is Carl.